welcome to the last lecture of this course, the last tutorial also, tutorial 4, we will solve some mesh parameter problem and signal flow graph problem. The first problem that find the overall S parameter of the cascaded network given below. Obviously, there, there are two networks you see two basically uh, one T network cascaded with a pi network. Values are given characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. So, it is easier since this is cascade of two networks we can convert to A B C D matrix and so A B C D matrix of a equivalent network you know this can be written like this. So, A B C D parameters of a T network. So, you can easily find out this is your B tech level knowledge then so the first network T network you can find the ABCD matrix to be this then the pi network that either you can convert to T network and then find the ABCD matrix. So, this you know so this two we have found so overall ABCD matrix is this. and then this A B C D matrix can be converted to S matrix by going like that. This is to show you the usefulness of the A B C D parameter. If you can convert from S to A B C D nothing like that. Now, let us come to the second problem the scattering matrix of a lossless directional coupler is given determine its characteristic parameters that is directivity coupling factor and isolation. You see here deliberately one value is not given the S 4 1 value S 4 1 or S 1 4 whatever you say let us call it x, but it is told that it is lossless. So, the S matrix will be unitary. So, we know that unitary means any column its self conjugate will be 1. So, for the first column we can say 0.92 square plus j 0.32 square plus x square should be 1 that reveals the value of x to be 0 0.22. Now, in a coupler symmetrical coupler we know this is the generic value that we have seen and if we compare then we get that the S 1 3, S 1 2 and S 1 4 values. Once we have that we can coupling factor we have given the formulas in the earlier lecture that coupling factor is minus 20 log S 1 3. So, you can find out it is 9.9 .9 dB directivity is 20 log S 1 3 by S 1 4. So, it is so 3.25 dB isolation see and as you can verify that in dB scale we know I is equal to d plus C. So, d is 3.25 C is 9.9. .9. So, their sum is 13.15 and that is equal to I. So, you can say that this directional coupler is not a very good directional coupler that though it is coupling power is 10 dB, but its directivity is very low that means it is it cannot suppress the reflected wave very much and its isolation is also poor 13 dB isolation is not always very good just because its directivity is poor. If directivity instead could have been 30, 40 dB, you see isolation also could have been increased a lot. Okay. Now, let us come to a magic T problem. 
it is said that it shows no reflections when all the ports are matched. When some power is applied to port 1, 40 percent of the input power comes out from port 2 and 40 percent comes out from port 3. Also the signals at port 2 and port 3 are in phase. When the power is applied to port 4, 40 percent of the input power goes to port 2 and the signal at port 3 is 180 degree out of phase with that at port 2. The network is reciprocal, determine the S matrix of the network. So, it is said that 4 ports and no reflection when all the ports are matched, that means you can easily say that the 4 diagonal elements of the matrix will be 0. As network is reciprocal, so you can reduce and also if you remember that 180 degrees. So, one of the thing you can take as minus and now you can apply it is a lossless device. So, unitary property. So, from that you can determine S 1 4 and S 4 1 and also S 1 2 S 1 3. Also it is said 40 percent going to some where means that power wise you remember S matrix is generally voltage. So, S 4 2 square is equal to S 2 4 square is equal to 0.4. So, you get those values. Then unitary property in second row you can solve for S 3 2. So, S 3 2 is there by that you can solve for all the values. So, enough uh, information is given in the problem to get you those values. Remember the that symmetrical means S i j is equal to S j i unitary properties that gives you all the thing. Now, the signal flow graph this problem that suppose this T matrix was given in an earlier problem also the you have also a loaded thing that means, a J del is connected J des is connected. So, find out the reflection coefficient and both at input and output source and load impedances are given to be 50 ohms. So, S matrix of the network we have earlier found out you can just see from there that S matrix of the two port network will be like this 0 0.89.10 and the graph we have shown. Now, the input side we have already in the lecture you can see the input reflection coefficient for a loaded one by signal flow graph comes to be this S 1 1 plus S 1 2 S 2 1 gamma L by 1 minus this. So, gamma out also you can find from this, but to determine gamma L and gamma S you need to determine J out and J in output impedance and input impedance. Now, input impedance you see input impedance will be what? that it is seeing a 8.56 in series with this whole thing, which is nothing but parallel of 141.8 and series of these two. So, that is written here self explanatory that becomes 50 ohm. So, input impedance is 50 ohm and J out also if you see that it turns out to be 50 ohm. So, basically characteristic impedance 50 ohm, J in J out is 50 ohm, load and source also 50 ohm. So, gamma L will be 0, gamma S will be 0. So, gamma if you put gamma L and gamma S here 0. So, it is simply S 1 1.
and it is simply S 2 2. So, this is 0 0.89 that is all. So, we have shown you all the problems etcetera. Now, I hope that in this series of lectures, we have tried to give you the three fundamental tools and various applications of that. Also, lot of problems have been solved in tutorials. So, it will give you a good foundation in your future professional life. Thank you.